I'm going to hand things over to our keynote speaker, Jonathan Mahoney. Just before I begin, guys, can, can everyone hear me pretty well? Yeah. Awesome. So, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first ever quintuple graduation. Today, friends, family are gathered to celebrate the graduation and achievements of Madeline Reynolds from Southern Methodist University. Happy birthday! Happy birthday as well. Hannah Kristen from Michigan State University. Lauren Ilsley from the University of Richmond. Abby Myers from Dartmouth College. And Colette Cacciatore from the University of Georgia. So I'm glad everyone can be here today, and I'm really honored you guys would ask me to speak. So for you young ladies out there, you're about to embark on the next chapter of your life. Your days of focusing solely on academics are over. Game days will no longer be the highlights of your weeks during the fall semester, and wearing basketball jerseys out to bars and parties are no longer acceptable. <laughs> True. True. This will be a time of change, but for the better. You will all grow individually while also remaining close to one another. With that said, we want to come to the purpose of this gathering, and that's to send you all off with some advice to tackle this new phase in your lives. Most graduation speakers are of an older generation, not a peer generation. Their time away from undergraduate has taught them many lessons in life that they would be able to impart on you guys. As I'm only three years out of school, <laughs> three, <laughs> I first struggled to put pen to paper what advice I could instill upon you guys. Then I began to think of one underlying theme of advice that I have received one way or another from my parents, co-workers, mentors, and friends. Surround yourself and listen to those who know more than you. Find people you admire for their success, integrity, personality, and be around them. Listen often and learn. Now since, now since my graduation, I've always tried to surround myself or listen to advice of those who know more than me. About a year into my work routine, I came across some of the best advice I received and took it to heart. It was from a 2014 graduation speech by Admiral McRaven at the University of Texas. A man well accomplished whom I admire and wanted to take his message and implement it in my daily life. So I will briefly summarize his work, remaining within the time constraints Kim Reynolds has set for me. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. I will be brief. William Harry McRaven is a retired United States four-star admiral. He was born and bred into a Navy family, and as soon as he possibly could, enlisted and reported for SEAL training in San Diego, California. He went through a grueling six-month training course designed to cram a lifetime of challenges into six months, a place that would test one's ability to lead under constant duress, to seek out and find the very best warriors possible. When, ad when the Admiral spoke, he realized that many of in front of him were not enrolling in SEAL training, and I can assume that's probably the same for this group here. <laughs> However, his time in SEAL training taught him some of the most valuable life lessons in order to be successful in any path or goal you set for yourself. These following lessons are applicable to both men, women, children, parents, and just really anyone. So lesson one, always start your day by making your bed. During the entirety of Admiral McRaven's tenure at camp, he had to start every morning with a bed inspection at 4.45 a.m. His sheets had to be perfectly, had to be perfect and his pillow uh, fluff. The reasoning behind this was simple. Start every day with a task accomplished because that task rolls over into another task completed 
and then another task completed. You learn quickly that the little things matter, and then if you can't do the little things right, you'll never get the big things right. And of course, if you happen to have a miserable day, you'll at least come home to a made bed, one that you made, all of you. And a made bed will give you encouragement that tomorrow's gonna be a better day. Lesson two, during training, the SEALs were required to team up in groups of eight and paddle a small boat through the surf zone that juts out from the beach. Now the Admiral was a six foot three, 220 pound lean muscle machine that believed he could pull his boat through the treacherous waters or the treacherous terrain. In reality, his boat consistently capsized in the beginning. It was not until they realized they needed a coxswain to steer and guide them. It was not until they realized that they had to synchronize their paddles. It was not until they worked together that they were able to paddle through the surf zone and back without capsizing. Wherever you're going in life, you're gonna need a little help to get there. And being a good teammate will serve you well. Lesson three, during the land phase of training, the SEALs were required to complete a grueling timed obstacle course that comprised of running, climbing, carrying logs, and swimming. Your team could only complete a challenge based on an aggregate time and result of every member in the group. The Admiral was placed on a team that comprised of men similar in stock to his own physical attributes. However, it was the Munchkin crew, a group of the smallest guys that constantly won these challenges. The group consisted of one Native American, one African American, one Polish American, one Greek American, one Italian American, and two tough kids from the Midwest. They, as a team, outworked every other single group every single time. SEAL training was a great equalizer. It did not matter your ethnic, racial, or socioeconomic background. Nothing mattered more in life than the size of your heart or your will to win at whatever your goals are. Lesson four. Periodically, throughout training, the drill sergeants would conduct uniform inspections. Your shirt had to be pressed, no wrinkles, your tie the perfect length, pants perfectly creased, and so on. Failure to meet these standards uh, required a time three mile run in that uniform on the beach and finish rolling around in the sand. The trainees were then told to clear every single grain of sand off their, uni their uniform by hand. Otherwise, they would fail and have to repeat the process long into the night until the instructors deemed it was enough. The lesson in this is simple. You will fail in life. You will fail often. What matters is your ability to keep going forward, to rerouting your path until your mission is complete and not getting hung up on particular failures along the path. Lesson five, during Hell Week, the SEALs are kept awake for 72 hours straight. On the last day of Hell Week, they are flown five miles offshore to an island east of San Diego and instructed to swim back to the mainland during the night. Prior to the departure, the instructors also take great time and pleasure in informing the trainees of all the different kinds of shark species that inhabit the waters off the coast including the great white shark. They then gleefully joke that no trainee has died from the swim that they can remember. However, they are told if, that if a shark does begin to surround your position, looking for a late night snack, don't turn and run. Stand your ground, and if that shark takes a swipe at you, punch it square in the nose and it will swim away. Life is full of sharks and treacherous waters plan to make the swim towards your goals, you have to deal with the bullies and sharks in your life. Stand your ground and don't back down. Finally, Admiral McRaven talked about the bell that was centered in the middle of the training center, between the barracks and the entrance of the facility. At any time, a SEAL could walk up and ring the bell. If they did that, it meant the individual had capitulated and quit. If you rang the bell, it meant you no longer would have to wake up 
at 4.45 a.m. every single day. If you rang the bell, you would no longer have to survive for weeks on end with fewer than five hours of sleep a night. If you rang the bell, you would no longer have to be harassed and put through grueling training. If you rang the bell, you would no longer have to sit in bone-chilling cold water at night. If you want it out, simply ring the bell. If you want to be successful in your endeavors, never, ever ring the bell. Congratulations again to the classes of 2020 for all your hard work and determination over the past four years. And now from here, we're going to move on to the diploma ceremony. So I just need a minute. I gotta find the diplomas. <laughs> so when I call your name, please come up, stand by your school's flag, face Mr. Elsley and we'll take a nice photo. So first up, Colette Cacciatore from the University of Georgia.